Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, today we will uh, uh, start another module that is called the separation of particle materials by different methods. So, uh, in this uh, lecture today we will try to uh, discuss about the separation of particles by screening. There are several other methods which are available to separate the particulate materials whether it is coarser or finer according to that size the particulate materials is being separated by different techniques. And also there are several uh, you know equipments that are available uh, by which you can segregate or separate those particulate materials either in you know uh, from the effluent of that industry uh, through uh, some you know through some duct uh, from the industrial outlet or the particulate materials which are available in uh, you know uh, open air or atmosphere uh, and also those particles how to separate. Also uh, in uh, you know laboratory scale sometimes you have to you know separate the materials based on their size and how to do that uh, you will be you know uh, you know uh, knowing about those techniques here in this module. So, today uh, we will discuss about that separation of particles by screening. Here uh, in this uh, lecture what is the screening and what are the standard equipment that is available for the screening and what is the efficiency or effectiveness of the screen or sheep that will be discussed. So, what is the screening? Basically, it is a method for the separation of particles according to size. You will see that in industrial screening the solids are you know uh, dropped on through dropped or, or thrown uh, against a, a screening surface. In this case you will see that some particles will be segregated based on their size just by a you know uh, mechanical uh, prohibition where you will see that uh, some opening of that mechanical prohibitions will be there through which that particles will be you know uh, coming out uh, just from the you know uh, mixer based on their size. So, in that case those particles which will be coming down or pass through that you know opening of that mechanical provision it is called sheave or screen you know that will be called undersize or fines and those undersize uh, uh, particles pass through the screen openings and uh, those who will be left on the uh, you know on the uh, you know surface of that you know screen that will be called oversize that means the size of that particles will be higher than the openings. So, that will be you know left over on the surface of that screen. So, that is called oversize or sometimes it will be you know uh, you know regarded as a tail somewhere you will see that some particles will be you know you know taken out with their you know you will see that uh, special size or desired size as a tail also. So, in this case you will see that the undersize even oversize particles will be there after segregation uh, and uh, uh, based on that you know capacity of uh, undersize or oversize after separation uh, that uh, you know will be you know used to analyze the screen efficiency or effectiveness. And a single screen that separates that solid mixer into two fractions of this then undersize and oversize uh, particles there. Okay. And you will see that from that feed mixer you will get this undersize and you know oversize particles at a particular fraction of a specific material and those specific material concentration or fractions that will be used to analyze that effectiveness or efficiency of the screen or you can say that separating devices. So, in this case uh, screening generally uh, special terms that is being used in a laboratory scale uh, operation and uh, that is screen that is called screen or sheave you can say that. Here in this uh, you know slide a uh, uh, picture is shown that here different uh, sizes of uh, screen are shown here. 
you will see that uh, this uh, screen actually is you know categorized based on the uh, number of openings of the screen. Now, here if you are having the more number of openings that means they are the size of the openings will be small whereas, if you are having you know bigger size opening that means here number of openings will be less. So, accordingly that number of size of openings number of you know openings and size of the openings uh, based on who is that you know screen or ships are uh, categorized. There are different sizes screen or ships are available ok. So, based on which you can get the different sizes particles after being operated by this screen. So, material passed through a series of screen of different sizes is separated into sized fraction. Here you will see that standard screen if you are talking about a standard screen here you will see that the screen will have different meshes you will see that that will be you know you know called as mesh number here 4, 6, 8, 10, 14, 20, 28, 35, 48, 60, 500, 150 and 200 like this. This is the mesh and this mesh you know will have certain opening size. So, based on that opening size what will be the number of openings that also can be you know obtained. So, in this case if you are having that mesh number 4 in this case the screen opening will be of size 4.699 millimeter. Similarly, if you are increasing that mesh number you will see that 4 to suppose 200 in that case this the opening size of that mesh will be you know reduced. So, at the higher here up to 200 if you are considering this is the standard screens mesh number or screen size in the laboratory scale. So, it will be for 200 mesh where the opening size will be 0 0.074 whereas, the bigger size uh, screen that means opening uh, size will be higher in that case and mesh number will be lower in that case it will be called as mesh 4. So, it, its opening size is 4.699. In that case accordingly you will see that if you are using these different meshes with those you know different opening sizes and if you use these different meshes for you know segregating the particles based on their size you will see that if you have suppose certain amount of you know feed mixer which will be segregated based on their sizes with those you know uh, mesh then according to that opening size the particles will be segregating ok. That means, the opening of that size based on their size the particles will be you know going downward or pass through as per their opening size. So, here those who are passing through that opening size the what will be the mass fraction of that material which will be passing through that opening. So, that is actually expressed by x i and if you consider that cumulative way of that mass fraction that can be you know calculated in this way. So, initially you will see that if you are using that mass fraction of that you know certain material where you will see that all the particles will be above that opening size of 4.699 that means you, you will say that that no material should be passed through that mesh of mesh number 4 which have the opening size of 4.699. So, in that case the mass fraction will be 0 there whereas, if you allow it through that you know mesh number 6 you will see that the opening size of 3.327 you will see that some amount of material should pass through whose have the size you know around 3.327 millimeter in. and those materials will have the mass fraction of 0 0.0251. Similarly, for you know other meshes you will see that if you have if you use all the meshes you will see that up to a certain mesh number you will see that all the particles will be coming through no particles will be remain on the screen. So, in that case you will see that at the uh, you know you will see that uh, they are uh, the 200 mesh that the you know mass fractions will be you know around 0 0.0031. So, in this case uh, you will see that this mass fraction will be depending on that you know opening of the screen size 
and accordingly that you can have a correlation for this like this x i will be equal to 0 0.336 into e to the power minus d p i minus 1.572 whole square divided by 0 0.621. So, from this correlation you can easily calculate what will be the you know mass fraction of that you know uh, materials after segregation. And also you can make a correlation for the screen opening as d p i that will be equal to you know depending on that you know mesh number which will be correlated by this equation. So, what will be the screen opening and if you have that mesh number then you will be able to calculate what will be the screen opening size. So, in this case you have to remember that the set of screens is based on the opening of the 200 mesh screen which is established at 0.074 millimeter and the area of the opening in any one screen in any one screen is the series in the series you can say is exactly twice that of the openings in the next smaller screen. What does it mean that here what is the area of opening in any one screen any one screen suppose this one this is your opening of this screen. So, area of this opening of this it will be you know that if we are considering the square opening it will be generally. So, 1.651 into 1.651 that will be your area. So, this area you know in this series is exactly twice that of the opening in the next smaller screening. What is the next smaller screening? This one. So, if you again find out the area of this smaller screen then it will be coming as 1.168 into 1.168 this will be your area. So, this area will be almost twice of this area of this opening area. So, this is like this. Also one thing you have to remember that the ratio of the actual mesh dimension of any screen to that of the next smaller screen will be is equal to root of R2 that will be equal to 1.41. That means, here this one this opening will be is equal to 1.41 into this opening. Okay. So, these are called standard screen and this screen are also called as you know Taylor standard screen series and the most common modern shifts are in size such that the ratio of the adjacent shift sizes is the fourth root of 2. So, that is for modern uh, shifts this is not the standard of that Taylor series here uh, it will be at modern they are defining they are you know designing these shifts in different way. So, they are having this uh, uh, you know shifts as like that the ratio of the adjacent shift size will be fourth root of 2 like this here suppose the you know uh, shifts are like 45 number 53 number 63 75 90 107 millimeter. So, in this case this uh, uh, shift of 53 will be is equal to you know next one what is that uh, uh, previous one is 45 and next one is 53. So, in this way uh, we can say that 53 will be equal to 42 into 2 to the power 1 by 4. So, in this way they are you know designing that mesh in the modern uh, ship. Then uh, uh, we are talking about that screening also in uh, industry use. So, in that case the industrial screen are made from oven wire, silk or plastic cloth, metal bars, perforated or slotted metal plates or wires. So, in that case different types of screen you will get that may be you know uh, base wise operated or continuously it will be operated. So, this uh, you know screen will not be the same as that laboratory scale uh, screen. It will be you know some other way, but main purpose is to segregate those materials in the uh, large capacity. So, various metals are used in this case you will see that stainless steel the most common here and in this case the screens are to be you know shaked or gyrated or vibrated either by mechanically or electrically. So, here you will see that in this uh, picture they are uh, you know animated here you will see that in this case the feed materials will be you know passing in a uh, you know pan whereas, uh, uh, whenever it will be fed to a you know vibrating uh, screens there the solid materials will be you know passing through that you know opening of that screen uh, in this you know pan and after vibration you will see that those who are not you know uh, passing through that uh, openings 
those will be you know taken part in different uh, uh, storage whereas that you know those are coming through that you know openings those will be taken uh, into another storage tank. So, in this way it will be you know segregated based on that opening of that you know screen ok. So, here basically that screens are you know vibrating in that vibration will give you that you know that is driving force to pass through that you know opening of that screen. So, any screen whatever you are talking about there will be a certain opening that opening either in a fashion of you know that circular or you know that rectangular or you can say that longitudinal uh, or you can say that it will be square uh, opening or sometimes you will see that you know triangular openings also there. So, to operate those things so industrially for continuous operation that you have to you know give some external forces those external force will vibrate that screen so that that materials which are you know uh, uh, size of less than openings it will become uh, down through that you know, uh, you know screen openings. And then uh, uh, we are having you will see that other uh, things here like you know uh, different types of you know industrial uh, you know screens it is called uh, stationary grizzlers uh, you know uh, stationary grizzlers they are uh, generally this grizzlies is a uh, grid of uh, you know uh, parallel metal bars set in uh, an inclined stationary frame here as shown in the picture. The slope and the path of the material are usually parallel to the length of the bars here you will see that here in this picture shown. The large sunks roll and slide to the tails discharge small lumps fall through here. Here you will see that those who are smaller in size compared to these grid uh, gaps those will be coming down through this you know grid whereas, the larger uh, size of this grid openings it will be you know roll down over the surface of the you know grids. So, in this way this static grizzly uh, screens will separate those you know materials. So, in this case large sunks roll and slide to the uh, tails as a discharge where a small lumps will fall through the you know opening of this grizzlies. And in cross section you have to remember that the top of each bar should be wider, wider than the bottom. So, that the bars can be made you know fairly deep for strength without being choked by lump which will be passing partly through this grizzlies. And the spacing between the bars will be 2 to 8 inch generally within this range this you know the spacing of these bars to be maintained whereas, it will be actually 50 to 200 millimeter in size. So, that you have to remember. So, one important equipment for this particle separation in industrial scale it is called stationary grizzlies. Another it is called the gyratory or vibratory screen here is in this shown uh, picture it is shown that there are different type of you know gyratory or vibratory screens here in this case the screens are to be you know uh, externally you know uh, moved by you know certain uh, you know uh, force that may be you know either by it is called electrically or mechanically uh, shaking or rotating you can say that continuously. So, that particles will be you know separated. So, two screens are above the other are held in a uh, casing inclined at an angle between 16 and 30 degree with the horizontal you will see that here one gyratory screen uh, shown here in the picture. In this case casing and screens are gyrated in a vertical plane about a horizontal axis by an eccentric. And the rate of gyration uh, is generally maintained 600 to 1800 rpm. And, uh, these screens are generally rectangular and fairly long typically 0.5 to 1.2 meter in uh, length to the 1.5 to 4.3 meter uh, breadth like this or 0.5 to 1.2 meter uh, wide and 1.5 to 4.3 length. Oversized particle here in this case uh, will fall from the lower ends of the screens into a collecting ducts after separation. So, in this way you can have this segregation of this material or separation of the materials based on their size 
either by static or you know continuous or gyratory vibratory screen. And then you will have uh, you will see that uh, other type of other type of uh, you will see that uh, the screen uh, it is called you know centrifugal shifter. In this case uh, the screen is a horizontal uh, cylinder of woven metal or plastic. Uh, the high speed helical paddles on a central shaft that will impel the solids against the inside of the stationary screen as shown in the picture you will see that. And in this case fine pass through that uh, you know screen whereas oversize is conveyed to the discharge port by this you know equipment. So, here it is called centrifugal you know shifter. So, basically what is that? The screen is a horizontal cylinder here as shown in the picture here ok and it will be you know made by woven material or plastic you can say and whenever the high speed helical paddles on uh, the central shaft it will be applied you will see that it will drive that solid materials against the inside of the stationary screen just allowing it through the you know screen openings. So, during that operation the fines will pass through that you know screen openings and uh, whereas, that oversized materials will remain inside that cylinder and it will be you know taken out through the discharge port. Now, one of the important point that you have to uh, know or uh, you have to remember also whatever you know basic equipments to be used for segregating this material based on the size by an equipment you have to know what is the effectiveness or efficiency of that equipment. That uh, screen effectiveness or efficiency that will be you know defined based on that you know measure of the success of the screen. That means, what degree of separation will be there for a specific material by that equipment. So, that efficiency of the screens depends on that you know size of the material you know as well as you know you can say that type of materials whether it will be very dried or sticky and also it depends on that interaction of the particles inside that you know equipment. So, the screen effectiveness that you have to know what is exactly that and how you can estimate that screen efficiency or effectiveness ok. So, it is basically a measure of the success of the screen in closely separating that material suppose type A and type B which is in a mixer. And if the screen functions perfectly then you can say the all the material suppose type A would be in the overflow and all the material B would be in the underflow. That means, if a mixer of A and B you are getting then you are going to separate this material A and B by a certain equipment of that you know screen as a screen. So, screen if efficiency will be depending on that if, if the if screen effectiveness will be perfect or 100 percent efficiency it will give you if you are having all the A type particles at in the you know undersize whereas, that you know all the B materials will be in the oversize or undersize according to that size its size. So, perfectly operated or efficient you know screen that will give you the complete separation of that category of the material ok. So, here you will see that let us consider one you know screen like this as shown here uh, diagram. This is a screen of that equipment through which that particles will be passed through and some particles which are having that uh, uh, bigger sizes of this screen opening will retain on that you know screen that will be as overflow whereas, the particles which will be coming down through the screen that will be regarded as a underflow and the feed material will be a mixture of overflow and underflow materials. So, whenever feed material pass through this you know screen that is screen either operated by you know mechanically by shaking or electrically by shaking 
you will see that the materials will be passed through that screen opening those who have the smaller size compared to that screen opening it will be coming downward as a underflow material whereas the bigger size materials compared to that size opening that will be coming out as a overflow. So, we can give a name of this suppose feed material as a F amount and overflow materials will be coming as a D amount and underflow will be as a B amount. So, we can say that with those concept of this overflowing and underflowing materials from this feed material by this screening operation, we can do a simple material balance to assess those you know to assess this you know screen, screen efficiency or effectiveness. So, if we do that simple material balance for materials of say oversize as A and uh, undersize as B, you can say that can be done over a screen to calculate the effectiveness or efficiency of the screen. Now, if we consider that F is equal to mass of flow rate of the feed, D is the mass of flow rate of overflow and B is the mass flow rate of underflow. Now, if we consider that A is the material which is to be you know separ separated from the mixer. If we consider that tag or you know that uh, specific materials let it be A type. So, if we have that mass fraction as x a f of that material A in the feed and x a d is the mass fraction of the material A in the overflow and mass fraction of the material A as x a b in the underflow streams. Also the remaining fraction that means, we can say that 1 minus x a f, 1 minus x a d, 1 minus x a b that respectively in the feed overflow and underflow will be there. Okay. So, mass fraction of material B we can say that it will be in that respective feed overflow and underflow. Now, if we consider the total balance then we can see that that here feed material that will be is equal to summation of that underflow and overflow or you can write here F will be equal to D plus B in equation number 1. And if we consider the balance of only material A, so in that case in the feed mixture the amount of A will be equal to F into X A F and in the underflow the feed material of A will be equal to B into X A B and in the overflow in the D amount then it will be for that A material it will be D into X A D. So, we can say that for this material A balance, so it will be F x A F that will be equal to D into x A D plus B into x A B. So, this is represented by equation number 2. Now, from this equation number 1 and 2, if we eliminate the mass B, then we can write D by F will be equal to x A F minus x A B divided by x a d minus x a b which is given in equation number 3. Similarly, if we eliminate d we can write this equation as b by f that will be equal to x a d minus x a f by x a d minus x a b which is given in equation number 4. Now, we have to you know assess that screen effectiveness or efficiency based on that amount of that oversize and undersize material. Now, the effectiveness or screen efficiency either based on material A or B which can be defined as E A or E B. E A is basically the effectiveness or screen efficiency based on material A. So, E A will be equal to amount of oversize material A in the overflow divided by amount of A type material entering with the feed. So, those can be you know defined by this. So, what is the amount of oversized material A in the overflow that will be D into X A D and in the you know feed that is entering to that screen that will be F into X A F. So, D X A D by F X A B 
that will be is equal to screen efficiency based on the material A. Similarly, the effectiveness based on the material B, it will be based on that amount of undersized material B in the underflow divided by amount of B entering with the feed that will be is equal to B x B you know B divided by F x B F. So, it will be is equal to B from that material balance it will be is equal to B into 1 minus x A B divided by F into 1 minus x A F. So, that will be given uh, that is given in equation number 6. So, screen effectiveness or efficiency can be assessed based on that type of material. So, overall effectiveness what will be that? The overall effectiveness can be defined as that E overall that will be E A into E B that means individual effectiveness based on that individual amount of that material A and B then multiplying those you know or product of this individual efficiency based on that individual material then the overall efficiency can be calculated as E A into E B. So, after substitution of E A and E B then we are getting this equation number 7 as D to B into X A D into 1 minus X A D divided by F square X A F into 1 minus X A F after substitution and simplifying. Now, if you substitute this value of D by F and B by F in this equation number 7 from the equation number 3 and 4 that earlier we have got in this mass balance equation D by F and B by F if we substitute here in this equation 7 then we can have this overall efficiency of the screen which is given in equation number 8. So, in this case it depends on the mass fraction of the particular material let it be A. So, in terms of A you can get what will be the mass fraction of that material A in the feed, in the underflow, in the overflow then you can easily calculate what will be the overall efficiency of the screen. Now, let us do an example with this theory of this screen effectiveness. Here it is said that a material mixer having the screen analysis which is shown in table here and is screened through a standard 10 mesh screen. The cumulative screen analysis of the overflow and underflow are given in table. Calculate the mass ratios of the overflow and underflow of the feed and calculate the overall effectiveness of the screen. So, here it is said that the 10 mesh it is being used okay, and also that screening has been done through a standard uh, uh, you know screen and for various you know mesh it is done also and accordingly based on that screen opening you can say that the feed materials will be of fraction like this and overflow fractions are like this and underflow fractions like this. Whereas, you are talking about that standard screen of that 10 mesh screen here it is indicated that yellow marker here the 10 mesh screen will have that opening as 1.651 and there feed mass fraction is then 0.47 overflow mass fraction of that material A that is 0.85 and that you know underflow concentration or mass fraction is 0.195. So, if we plot this you know that uh, particle size that is dp and mass fraction then we will see that this type of uh, you know profile we can get from the mass fraction change with respect to particle size. So, here it will be one profile is for overall another profile is for feed and then and other one is under size you will see that how it will be you know decreasing you know fashion with respect to particle diameter. So, since we are talking about that you know 10 mesh screen. So, there what will be the you know typical size of that opening that is particle size is 1.651. So, here we are having that 1.651 here in this point okay. and the corresponding value of that undersized fraction is 0.47 here 
and you know that uh, overflow uh, is 0 0.85 here and also you can say that a feed is 0 0.45 and undersize is 0 0.195 here like this. Okay. Based on this fraction we will be able to calculate then what will be the you know overflow and underflow of the feed and also effectiveness. Now, if we consider that cumulative analysis of this feed of overflow, underflow which are plotted here in this picture and accordingly what will be the undersize fraction, feed fraction and overflow fraction as per given condition. So, from this table we can say that x a f we can say here 0 0.47, x a d will be equal to 0 0.85 and x a b that will be 0 0.195. So, as per that material balance or mass balance you can say the ratio of that overflow to the feed that is from equation number 3 here that we have done here equation number 3 that is d by f. So, from this equation number 3 we can have d by f is equal to 0 0.420 after substitution of these fractions. And what will be that ratio, uh, ratio of overflow to the feed that will be equal to b by f that can be obtained from equation number 4 earlier that we have done mass balance. So, after substitution of those fractions here then you can get here 0 0.58. Now, we got this d by f and b by f value okay. and also to calculate that overall effectiveness or efficiency we need to have that fraction of material A in feed underflow and overflow which is given or which are uh, we are give, getting from this graph at this you know undersize feed and you know oversize as here for feed it will be 0 0.47 uh, you know that over size as 0 0.85 and undersize at 0 0.195. So, to calculate that overall efficiency you can use this equation as we have given earlier after substitution of d by f and b by f here and we are getting this equation number 8 for that overall efficiency. So, after substitution of these fractions in this overall efficiency and calculating finally, we are getting this value as 0 0.669. So, your screen is you know 66.9 percent efficient in your operation to segregate this material of A from this mixture of material A and B. I think you understood this problem here. Let us do another example here which is given in GET 2002. There it is said that a sand mixer was screened through a standard 10 mesh screen. The mass fraction of oversized material in feed overflow and underflow were found to be 0 0.38, 0 0.79 and 0 0.22 respectively. Now, what is the screen effectiveness based on this oversize material? So, here it is given that what is the feed mass fraction for this uh, you know oversize material it is given 0 0.38 and undersize for that material it is x id is equal to 0 0.79 whereas, in oversize uh, so, it is under uh, it is undersize is 0 0.22 and oversize is 0 0.79 okay. and in the material balance you can say f will be equal to d plus b and based on that you know oversize material if we do the material balance we can have f into 0 0.38 into d into 0 0.79 into b into 0 0.22 as per that equation of that mass balance equation. So, after solving these two equation we can have f is equal to 0, uh, uh, 57, d is equal to 16 and b is equal to 41. So, we are having this you know what will be the amount of feed, what will be the amount of you know overflow and what will be the amount of underflow streams. Then you have to find out what will be the screen effectiveness based on the oversize material. So, oversize material screen effectiveness can be defined by this here amount of oversized material A in the overflow divided by amount of A entering with the feed that is d x d this divided by f x f. So, d we know 
f we know x said it is given to you x f is also given to you d and f we have found from this material balance which is here and after substitution of those values and calculating will give you that 0 0.58. So, screen effectiveness based on this oversized material it is coming 58 percent. I think you understood this problem. Then you have to know that what is the capacity of that screen, how that capacity will be you know related to that effectiveness of the screen. So, you have to remember some point here, you will see that the capacity of the screen is measured by the mass of material that can be fed per unit time to a unit area of the screen and this capacity and the effectiveness are basically opposite factors. To obtain maximum effectiveness the capacity must be small and the large capacity can be obtained only at the expense of reduction of its effectiveness. So, very important point. The capacity of a screen is controlled simply by varying the rate of feed to the unit or equipment. The effectiveness that obtained for a given capacity depends on the nature of the screening operation. So, these are some important point that you have to remember and also you will see that uh, the effect of mesh size on that capacitive screens. The probability of passage of the particle through a screen that is depends on the fraction of the total surface that is represented by openings and the ratio of the diameter of the particle to the width of the opening and the number of contacts between the particle and the screen surface. So, these are the points, these are the factors which will affect on the probability of that passes of that specific material through the screen and this actually will affect the capacity of the screen. Now, if you consider a series of screens of different mesh sizes and this practical thumb rules that you have to remember. In this case, if you are having that number of openings of the screen area, you will see that this number of openings per screen area will be inversely proportional to the square of that you know uh, some critical you know size of that screen that is called DPC. So, this DPC is basically the size of the largest particle which just passed through the screen is taken equal to the width of the screen opening. So, that is called DPC. So, this number of openings, number of openings per screen area will be inversely proportional to that square of that DPC and the mass of one particle that will be proportional to that you know cube of this you know DPC value and the capacity of that screen that in, in uh, measured in mass per time it will be proportional to the you know directly proportional to this you know size of this you know screen opening ok. So, that is called DPC. So, the capacity of screen in mass per time divided by mesh size should be constant that you have to remember ok. Other things that you have to uh, remember capacity of actual screen if you are measure in tons per feet square hour per millimeter of that you know opening size, but normally ranges between 0.05 and 0.2 for grizzlies and 0.2 to 0.8 for vibrating screens. So, these two points also you have to remember. As the particle size reduced, the screening becomes progressively more difficult and the capacity and effectiveness are in general low for particle sizes smaller than about 150 mesh. So, you have to remember it ok. So, I think you understood that the capacity of the screening different equipment who those are being used for segregating the material based on their size, what is the laboratory scale equipment, what is the industrial scale equipments which are being used for that separation of the material based on the size and how to analyze that efficiency of the size from the material balance of overflow, underflow and the feed size material you can easily you know assess it based on that. More about this you know separation of that materials 
where you will see that very fine particulate materials will be taken care in that case how that separation can be done and what are those suitable equipment for separation of very fine particulate materials which are existing in you know atmosphere as well as that you know outlet of that you know industrial effluent and what are the very fine particulate materials of different categories are coming out and how to segregate those materials that will be discussed in the successive lecture. In the next lecture, we will try to understand that how particulate material can be separated by gravity chamber and also what will be the mechanism of that you know separation of those particulate material those are very fine in size. So, thank you for giving your attention. Have a nice day.